What is the earliest time you no longer need to keep working? Meaning if you like to work, great, but you're truly only doing it because you want to, not because you have to. So this was a question that my client asked. He said, hey Ari, when's the earliest time I can retire? Like what's the least amount of money I need? And I was like, look, I'm not gonna be mean, but I don't love that question. They're like, why not? Like, Your job is to tell me the answer. I said, I know, but you really want to get by in retirement? Like, You could get by on 5000 a month, like I know you, but that's not going to allow you to live the life you really want to live. They're like, I know, but I just don't love my role right now, so it would feel really good if I knew when I could stop working. I said, okay, that's helpful, but you're probably not going to stop working, are you? They go, no, you know me. I'm probably going to do something. I just don't know what that's going to look like. I said, okay, let's talk about that because... Too often people think that retirement is, oh, I'm doing this job, now I'm going to do nothing for the rest of my life. But in reality, that's not what most of my clients do. Yes, I am the host of the Early Retirement Podcast, but a lot of my clients don't retire early. I'd say maybe 70% of them go, well, really good to know. I don't need to keep working if I don't want to, and I'm going to do this other career that's way more fulfilling. I'm going to do something that's way less stressful, or I am going to completely just spend time traveling and enjoy my retirement. So everyone's version is a little different. I just want you to know the earliest time that work is truly optional. That's what I'm going to show you today through a case study. Now, if you don't already know, my name is Ari Taubleib. I'm a certified financial planner. I am the host of the Early Retirement Podcast, and I'm the vice president here at Root Financial Partners. I'm going to walk you through a case study right now. The exact software that I am going to be using today is available inside of the Early Retirement Academy. So if you want to play around with everything that I'm about to show you, you can go ahead and do that. All the tax planning, conversion, insurance, withdrawal, you can have your fun inside that. So check that out if you don't already know. So let's talk about the couple that we're going to go through today. There's a real couple. They have $2 million in investments spread across a few different accounts, but it's all in employer accounts. So 401ks, IRAs, these are qualified dollars. So their 401k, obviously with their employer, their two IRAs, these were with previous employers. So these are now in rollover IRAs. So all their money is pre-tax. They have a home worth $613,000 with a $200,000 mortgage and just a little bit in the bank. So this is the couple we're working with. They are 60 and 57 with a 23-year-old child, and they don't know exactly when they're going to stop working, but they're like, look, what if we retired in two years? So we both work two more years. Let's talk about how much we could spend. And so I said, great, let's have that conversation. Now, Before I show you the answers and what this couple's on track for, know that every situation is different and that when it comes to financial planning, one little tweak will completely throw off a retirement plan, one inflation assumption, one healthcare assumption, one investment or tax assumption. So this is what their plan looks like right off the bat. I made it very clear to them. I said, hey guys, I know this is what it looks like you're on track for, $2 million, grows and grows, and you're on track for $17 million. Let me tell you why you do not want to retire. And the, the wife is like, what do you mean? This looks like we're in a good spot. We don't love our jobs. I said, well, what if it turns out you don't want to spend 5000 a month in retirement and you want to spend 10000 Because I know you could get by on 5000 but what if you wanted to spend ten? Like you realize that's really what we would love in retirement. You guys would still be okay. There'd still be $7 million. It's not $16 million, but it's a lot of money. Now, what if their investments don't do well? I'm not saying they're not going to do well, but what if they're like, hey, we're just not, we're not really into investing. That's not our thing. What if we're really conservative? Well, all I did in the last 10 seconds was make a shift to how much they're spending, a significant shift, and I made a shift to their investments. So assuming their investments just are naturally more conservative. Well, it looks like they're on track for $5 million. So it looks like they're in a good spot, but I wouldn't let anyone retire on this graph. Other advisors don't love when I say that, but it's because this graph just assumes markets do well and there's some, you know, very mild fluctuation that that's not real life. In real life, what I like to rely on is this chart right here. This is a withdrawal rate chart. This tells me how much income could come out of their portfolio to support their retirement. So the first thing that I see here, if this couple wanted to spend $10,000 a month instead of $5,000 a month, retire at 62 and 59, 
and they were just naturally unlucky and they were conservative investors, their withdrawal rate is starting off at about 8.27%. This is too high. So yeah, they're on track for $5 million, but I wouldn't give this person the green light to retire because their withdrawal rate, meaning what they're taking from their portfolio, it is too much. Now, here's the real risk. They retire early. They've got healthcare costs. They're doing a home remodel. They're buying a new car. They're traveling all while markets go down. So that could really impact the rest of their retirement. It's a fancy way of calling it sequence of return risk, which is what if I retire and get unlucky? It's a big risk. So what you can see here is their withdrawal rate is decreasing over time. That's a good thing. So what that means is their portfolio is growing faster than what they're spending. But the bad news here is look at their withdrawal rate in their late 80s, 90s. It's in 2 3%, which is good. It means they're not going to run out of money. But most people that come to me would rather spend more when they have their energy and health, and then they're probably going to spend less later in life. So this couple first came to me going, Ari, we got to do Roth conversions, and let's do the withdrawal strategy optimal. And I said, hey, all that's great, but let's talk about how much you'd love to spend. They're like, no, 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 I get that. Let's talk about conversions. I said, what you're asking me to do is start hopping into surgery without understanding if that's even necessary. And I showed them this graph right here, and they're like, wait, maybe we don't need to do Roth conversions. Like if we're spending this amount of money, like it doesn't even look like conversions will be a big issue. I go, they might not be. So the point here, this is assuming a couple retires at this time. Now, what if this couple's like, Ari, I get all this, but like, just tell me when could I retire then? I said, well, let's talk about a few things. Are you going to do anything else for income in retirement. And some people go, no, this is it. I just want to assume if I do something, it's bonus, but I don't want to rely on it. I said, okay, I'm cool with that. So what if you guys say, you know what, let's work three more years. Instead of two more years, we're going to work three more years. And they'll be like, Ari, I told you I didn't even want to work that long. So now we wanted to retire at 62 and 59. Now I'm recommending you guys work an extra year. Well, that helps the plan but it's not night and day. So before it was $5 million left over, now it's $6 million. That's a big difference, meaning working one more year is the equivalent of adding a million more dollars. Once again, if you wanna know how all of this is working, you can build the same thing for your specific plan inside the description. But now let's assume they go, Ari, we built out our expenses and this is what I want my clients to do. No, it's not 10,000 across the board forever. That's unrealistic. Maybe their base of expenses is 6,000, but they want to take vacations and maybe it's 25,000 a year. And we're going to help out a kid with a wedding for, you know, $35,000. And we're going to, so now let's like really build out the expenses more and have it be more thorough. Well, that changes the plan in a, in a major way where this is assuming if I put 10,000 here, that this couple is going to spend 10000 a month exactly for the rest of their life forever, no matter what. That's unrealistic. They're probably going to spend more at the beginning, have vacations, buying new cars, helping with weddings. Then it's probably going to come down. So even with the conservative allocation, look at what they're on track for. They're on track right now for a really healthy retirement. What I would want this couple to do is go, okay, you really want to stop working right now? here's what you could do. And this is just to give them peace of mind. If they said, I'm going to stop working entirely right now. If you guys did not invest well, you didn't optimize social security or taxes or anything like that. Right now, if you stop working and you want to spend what we're discussing you spend, let's look at your withdrawal rate. No, 15%, 8%, 7%, that, that's not sustainable. So they're like, okay, uh, we want to make sure it's sustainable. So what if our base expenses were 5000 a month and we spent 15000 instead of 25000 on travel and we only helped out for 20000 for the wedding? Would that make a big difference? And we'll go back and update it on this graph, but we'll also update it on the withdrawal rate. And now it is sustainable. I'm okay with one big year if we're going to buy a new car or do a remodel. That I'm not against, even if it looks like a really high number because it's not forever. Now their withdrawal rate's high, but look, it's only the first two years. From there, now it's really sustainable. I would even argue too low. And then what happens here? it jumps up a little bit because their conversions need to occur. So now they're in a comfortable spot. And watch what happens. What if they're like, Ari, you know, we're in retirement, but now we're not upset with the growth that's happening in the portfolio. That, that doesn't sway us one way or another. Well, watch what happens now. 
Now all of a sudden, you look at their portfolio, let's go back to this page here, you shift this to a growth portfolio or an aggressive portfolio, now their plan is gonna be on track to do really, really well. And the reason for that is because now that they're invest, they're getting way more growth. Now I'm not saying they need to have a hundred percent in a root, you know, portfolio, just a hypothetical. But what I want to do is I want to make sure that they don't run the risk of running out. So when I do planning for clients, generally I like it to be on moderate. It's a little conserved, moderate, balanced. That's where I just like to play around personally. So what this couple has the ability to ask themselves is. Hey, would I rather retire earlier, meaning right now, and walk away and spend this amount? Or would I rather work a few more years if that means I can spend 10,000 a month? Because 10,000 a month right now, on track, that they're gonna run out of money. Their withdrawal rate is way too high. So this couple might be like, we don't wanna spend 10,000 a month. We'd rather spend 6,000 a month. They might go, nope, we wanna spend, excuse me, 10,000 a month and do the vacations and the wedding. I'm like, great. And they'll go, well, how much longer do I need to work? And I'll just show them. What, what if you guys worked for five more years? Would that mean that you're in a position to do that? And now they're like, okay, not quite. But if you want to be big spenders, and some of my clients do, they'll play around with this to understand when are they really in a spot. And I would say with this couple, if they really wanted to spend 10000 a month, that's 120000 a year, plus 15000 a year on vacation. We're at 135 plus they're helping out with one wedding. So now we're at 150 and we're buying new cars. You know, there might be a year where 200000 250000 a year is needed. Well, we would want to make sure that that withdrawal rate is sustainable. So hopefully this is helpful thinking through, hey, when can you truly stop working? I encourage clients, play around with the software and see what it projects for your plan and take the time to understand what position you're actually in. So hopefully this was helpful. If you're looking for more content like this, please subscribe, like this video, and share it with others you want to retire early with. Thank you.